Hi, and welcome to Three Questions with got my buddy David with us, the 603 Realtor. Good afternoon, David. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Kevin. As always, I'm excited to be here. Hey, just before we start, just wanted to congratulate you on your election. Congratulations on that, my friend. Very Thank proud you. of you. So Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Today, because I'm just seeing all sorts of crazy stuff online about real estate. You know, rates have crept up a little bit, and you see people going, I'm not going to buy a house, David. I'm going to sit and wait for rates to come back down. Now, no one has a crystal ball. What if they don't come down in the next couple of years? You just gonna stand on the sideline? Does that is that good advice? What do you think? Well, to to compare the rates to prices, I remember three four years ago, I had buyers come and they're like, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna wait for prices to go down. I'm gonna wait for the spring." And what happened? <laughs> they doubled, and then they doubled, and then they doubled. Um, so I don't have a crystal ball. No one has a crystal ball. But what I know is this: what's crazy about rates is how fast they went up. But what's not crazy about rates is the fact that they're at six, seven, eight percent. That's normal. And I want to stress that that's normal to all the buyers out there. Yeah. Talk to, you know, an older relative, an older friend. They may have got their first home at, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, yeah. 20 percent. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, all the time. And the big thing about the interest rates, Kevin, aside from them really being normal. You can refinance if they come down. Yep. So if they're at, let's say, 7% today and, you know, a few months from now, they go back down to four and a half, talk to your mortgage loan officer. You have the house and now you have the lower rate. Yep. And a lot of home buyers, especially first time home buyers, don't know about this and they're so frightened. So that's why I tell them, even if you're not ready to buy now, talk to a realtor, talk to a respected mortgage loan officer, create a game plan and learn because knowledge is power. Now let's flip this over. How about if someone's selling? You know, we see people, well, is this the time to sell? Rates are higher. Am I going to get the price I want for my house? Because now people may not have the same buying power because rates went up. What's your advice on this side? Well, the good news for sellers is it's still a seller's market. You can still get top dollar for your home. But it's very clear for me to note for the sellers today, we're closer to a normal market than the extreme seller's market we saw six months ago, a year ago. That seller's market that we went through, those three or so four years were wonderful for sellers. It was like a gold mine. And it still is. But all the trends show that it's kind of going down. So if someone wants to, you know, time the market and wait, you know, go ahead. It's their life. But the spring market could look very different. Um, who knows? It might be better. But with rates still going up, I think we're going to see a gradual decline. And I'm not saying crash. I'm saying gradual decline. because That's really what it is. The market's correcting back to a normal state. We still have real supply issues, which is going to keep uh, the, the cost of homes inflated. Um, but if you're a seller and you're considering of, of downsizing, going somewhere else, buying another home, now is a wonderful time. I can come in with my luxury marketing crew. We get the drones out. We get the nice photos out. We do the high-end virtual staging. And right now, we're still seeing multiple offer situations, Kevin. And in any time period, that's a wonderful thing for sellers. So, David, one of the things you mentioned is the spring market. Yeah. So a lot of people like that. They're like, you know, I just want to wait till the spring. But if that's my plan, shouldn't I be talking to you now to put a plan in place as to whether I'm going to buy a house or sell a yeah. house to make sure I have everything where I need it to be? Correct. And I'll tell you why. I've actually got a bunch of home buyers right now. And once, you know, spring comes around, man, and those little flowers go up, they're hitting the ground running and they're getting an official pre-approval from their lender. So what are they doing right now? They're saving and they're working with financial advisors that I've referred them, or maybe they have their own. They've talked to me, they've talked to their mortgage lender. That way, when the time is right for them to pull the trigger, they are in the best situation imaginable for them and their families. Um, what is interesting to me, Kevin, is people will spend, you know, 30 minutes going over a grocery list and what they should get. What do we have? But when people go to buy or sell a house, they, they don't have a plan usually. And that scares me. If you've got more planning in your grocery list than you, <laughs> than you do having in your home buying or home selling strategy, that's scary where this is going to be the largest acquisition or liquidation usually in someone's lifetime. So if someone meets with me, we look at the market, but we really look where they are in it. Because the question is, is it a good market or is it a bad market? It's really an amateur question. 
you talk to the professionals, it all depends. Wh where do they want to be? What kind of house do they want? If they have a house, how much do they want for it? Where do they want to go? And as the professionals, we ask them these questions that they may or may not even be thinking of or aware of. And we say, that's good to know. We write it down. And together as a team, because just the realtor can't do it all, it takes, a, it takes a village, if you will. We get them in a good, solid position to do really uh, one, one of two things. Number, number one, provide safety. Number two, provide security. So, David, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? How can I learn more? Um, they can call or text me at 603-520-7924 or go to Google and type in David Loveland Jr., and all my information and all my sites will be scattered through it. And you might even see me in a newspaper article. Who knows? <laughs> David, I appreciate you taking a couple minutes to call into the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thank you, Kevin.